Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what exactly is lucid dreaming? Does it open a doorway to the dead? Are we able to communicate with others living or deceased in our sleep and take in messages from the grave? That's what we ask today on another exciting edition of Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Real Ghost Stories Online. Share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want to access all of our bonus episodes, all of our regular episodes as well, with no commercials, and uh, get the archive as well, which is the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories, let's check out ghostpodcast.com or Patreon, patreon.com, search real ghost stories, patreon.com slash real ghost stories, get access to all that bonus stuff, uh, all of it ad free as well enough, keep us on the air and uh, enjoy all the extras. It's uh, Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program as we enter the month of February. Is that where we're at? One. What? Yeah. Now, I always said February growing up, but I learned later it's Feb- February, correct? February, yeah. Feb- yeah, it's hard to... February. Just, February. 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 It's like, it's like brew. February. I don't know. I used to hate when I would read commercials and you had to say February. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, you didn't get to thinking about it. And then one person's going to say, Brewery it's this. is a really hard one to say, too. No, it's that. Yeah. <laughs> Join us at the brewery. That yeah. one's hard to say, especially if you're a hat. Have you had a few? <laughs> and that's always the best time to cut commercials. Because <laughs> <laughs> then the next day when you hear it on there, you're like, oh, my God, like, well, that doesn't sound very good. Can I go ready to do that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just had, uh, speaking of commercials, I have a client of mine that I've been doing stuff for for years. And it's funny, he, he's a great guy, but every year we do the same song and dance. He sends me, it's a yearly business, sends me the scripts. They're always like way too long. And I was going to go, here's the amount of words they can be. Can't be more than that. Can we just read it faster? No, we can't. No, That's we not can't. going to sound right. It's not going to fit. Can you speak? No, no, we can't. You need to edit the script to go to this number. Okay. Okay. And it just amazes me sometimes, like what people will think will fit into time slots and argue like a 15 second ad. It was like literally a hundred words. Now to put this in perspective, 15 second commercial really should be no longer than like 35, 40 words. If you want it to sound like audible (laughs) and, and, and understand what's being said. Um, but a hundred some words and other words like, like, ah, anyway. It's kind of one you know, of those things. It's like it's like when you go to a restaurant or a theater and it's sold out mm-hmm. or like the the restaurants on a wait list and you made a reservation for eight people and you bring in 10. Yeah. They have a table for eight people for yeah. you. They don't have a 10 top. Yeah. And then people all the time say, "We'll just add on two more seats." No. <laughs> Like you can't do that. Let me just extend the building over here for you, and or like this is like let me change space and time to make this work for you. I mean, because yeah, the, the the ones I had today, it's like they ordered a table for two, and they they ended up with a party of fifteen. <laughs> yeah, you can't. It's like it doesn't work. Yeah, it's like no, and the restaurant only seats eight. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like none of this will work, no matter any way you fold. Anyway. Um, uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Uh, let me take a quick sip of my tea. <clears throat> oh, you sound yes. all snobby-like. Uh, I, well, it's something that's keeping my voice alive right now. Okay. You were kind of bad last week, too. <clears throat> yes. And it's I mean, still with going all on. To you. I know. Um, I get this about once a year, although last year I didn't get it. Um, probably because I was avoiding human beings. Um, so when you're in a hole, you get less stuff. But now that we've been out a bit more, I got my uh, yearly thing where I, I, I'm feeling like it's probably bronchitis at this point. Um, so I'm going to get something at some point. 
I'm, I'm on hold, honestly, at this very moment with the uh, the doctor on call, and they may get to me by 4 a.m. So <clears throat> that'll be a fun uh, fun call. Let's go to our first story. It says, hi, uh, Tony, Harper, and Carol, and whoever else may be co-hosting. Love the show. Just started in mid-July 21, and I've been binging since then. Caught up to early February of this year. Oh, and Harper, you're awesome. You're so funny and ask great questions. Earlier today, I heard a caller that had talked about lucid dreaming and seeing her grandmother's deceased cleaning lady. It compelled me to share my story. I'm not sure if it was lucid dreaming necessarily, but I remember them vividly. In early 2009, my mom had passed away. She had a number of problems and was on life support. Had been for several days. It was obvious her body was shutting down. My dad and I had to make the horrifying decision to take her off. We decided it wasn't fair to any of us to keep her with no quality of life. Later that day, I was with my grandma, and I felt so guilty because I felt relieved. I asked her if it was wrong to feel that way. I was 27. Logically, I knew it wasn't. It had been a major stressor in my life, but I had to, to get an opinion. Of course, she said, no, it wasn't wrong. I completely understood. A few months later, I had a dream about mom. It was just us doing our normal running around town we used to do on my days off. We were ready to get back in the car, and in the dream, I heard myself ask in my head, did I do the right thing? And the dream ended before I got an answer. Clearly, I was still feeling guilty. A month or two later, I had a similar dream, again ending with an unanswered question. A month later, I dreamed I was working in a hospital with a funeral home attached. Bizarre, and the images I saw were creepy to say the least. I was looking around the hospital wing and saw my mom in one of the rooms, sitting in the hospital bed. Finally asked her, Mom, did I do the right thing? She looked at me and said, Honey, it's okay. You did the right thing. I turned around so she wouldn't see the tears I was fighting back and the relief sigh I took. I turned back around and the bed was empty with fresh sheets folded at the foot of it. I was sad that she was gone, but I finally had my answer. Very well could have been my own mind working through my own grief and guilt, but part of me honestly thinks it was my mom telling me it was okay. Just because so rarely in dreams I can say or do exactly what I want. Often in my dreams I either repeat words and actions or I say or do things that don't make a darn bit of sense. Another dream about my mom earlier last year in the dream I was sitting on my bed watching television and I felt someone plop next to me. Hi, yeah, yeah. One of my mom's many nicknames for me. I said hi and asked her what was up. She said it was nothing, really. She was just there to pester me. She then asked me how life was going, and I said, Mom, you're dead. Aren't you omnipotent or something like that? Her response still makes me giggle. Honey, we both know it doesn't work like that. She laughed, and the dream ended. Thanks for reading my story. Hope you enjoyed. Keep up the awesome podcasts. Thoughts on all that. You know, I just think so often you do get messages through dreams. Mm -hmm. Not every dream's like that. I mean, I've had some bad shit, crazy dreams. No message at all. Just bad shit, crazy dreams. Mm -hmm. But when you have that one that's really profound and you can't quit thinking about it, especially when it's one with a loved one in it who's passed, mm -hmm. I just think a lot of times there's messages in those for you. And because they can get to you when you're dreaming. Yeah. There's not a million things going on that's pulling you in a million different directions like most of us deal with every day. Mm -hmm. But when you're asleep, they could sneak in pretty easy. It's almost, I mean, here's uh, this should be like a good like title of a book or a story or an episode or something. It's almost like your soul is able to focus and not be so distracted by everything that you're being pulled in consciously. Yeah. And that allows you to uh, to absorb things, I guess, in a, a different way. Agreed. I really do think, because you're just in a totally different state when you're asleep. Mm -hmm. And not every dream where, like, you know, I'm sure there's been other dreams where her mom came back or his mom. Um, you know, or there was a dream with mom in it mm -hmm. that didn't mean anything. Sure. We've all had those, but there's just those dreams you just feel different about them. Mm -hmm. Or like that one where you just see a little 
sense of humor like your mom had a sense of humor and was funny and it's like that was so my mom sure you know and i just don't think everything has to be hit you over the head profound Mm -hmm. message you know like oh my god sometimes it could be just like a little hello go to the attic the fifth floorboard on the right (laughs) open it and you will find the knife that i killed i was thinking it would be a brooch (laughs) <laughs> I, like, I don't know why you were good. I, I was convinced you were going to say. No, this is going to be where you went with knife. Of course, I'm the real knife. killer of <laughs> Nicole Brown it. Simpson or something, you know. And it's like, no shit, OJ really was innocent. Yeah. Oh my god! <coughs> All these Whose years later, love was it? Yeah, it wasn't his. It's like, how well do you really know your family until someone finds <laughs> out they were the real killer and OJ? Never caught them. <laughs> and he just happened to be out for a drive the next day. It was just all a coincidence. Was it all a dream? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to try something here. Um, as uh, as you know, we, we've uh, been playing with some of that software that emulates voices as you hear Robert Stack now on the show. Robert's not going to read a story. Uh, don't worry. Um, either is Casey Kasem. But what God, I've been I love it though. what I've been working on messing around with is is inputting a ton of my voice into this thing. Okay. So that uh, if I'm ever dead, uh, which I'm sure will happen at some point, uh, if I'm ever if dead. I'm ever dead, <laughs> and and and, the, and, and I mean, Harper an yes, and and Harper is uh, running the show at some point. I can still be on the show. Harper gets to control what I say. I'm like a marionette at that point, except, you know, I'm dead. Uh, and and you can still hear me read stories. Now, I, I've put quite a bit of audio in here, and I'm sure this will get better over the years. So hopefully, many years down the road, this sounds even better. But here's how it's, I'm going to, this next story, because my voice is kind of shitty today. This is computer me reading the next story. And then we'll go to some callers. But this is only, it's like a excited. two, three minute story. Okay. So here we go. Let's see how it sounds. This is me. If, you know, if I weren't here. Hi there all. This is my first time writing. I just listened to the story about the woman finding pennies from her mom and I was inspired to share my story. When I was 16, my grandfather passed away in front of our house. He was driving himself to the doctor because he was having some chest pain and had a heart attack while driving. The car was fine. He actually stopped it safely. My grandparents meant a lot to me. They were the only source of real kindness and stability in my life, particularly my grandfather. His death was really hard on me. Not too long after that, I would find pennies on the floor of my room constantly. I never heard of the connection between pennies and those passed on, so it was just a weird thing to me. Just picked them up and went on with the day, until one day while in my room. I was reading on my bed. No one was home and I didn't have any music on. I heard a penny hit the floor. I heard it. Just popped and hit the floor. I got up and saw it. Picked it up. It was then that I felt it must have been my grandfather, long before he passed. He gave me this little book of pennies that collectors have, with different dates on them, etc., and that helped me make the connection in my memory. So, hearing that this happens to other people has made me feel less crazy and also validated that, for whatever reason, this happens as a thinking of you type gesture. One more story I have to share happened to me at work. I lived in Kenosha. Why at the time and I worked at an essential oils warehouse, packing and making all the smelly things. I was about 18. One day while capping some bottles with my boss, the subject of the paranormal came up. For a while now at the warehouse while working alone in the room, out of the corner of my eye I would see a man in a blue tucked in shirt standing in the doorway. I would turn to look and he would be gone. Happened a few times, but I never mentioned it to anyone. During the conversation with my boss, I said, I've seen something weird here. And she said, the guy in the blue shirt. I was a little speechless as I didn't say a word about it prior. And I said, oh, yes, you've seen him. And she just nonchalantly said, oh yeah, all the time and just kept working like he was just a normal thing that happens. And that was it. So thank you for your show. I appreciate not feeling crazy because this stuff happens to other people. There you go. (laughs) A little (laughs) computer-y. It's pretty good. Although um, computer Tony doesn't have the ability to read it in that kind of creepy way that you'll do it. Well, I, I think you I pause need to in certain places yeah. 
And that's the hard thing to do. I think if I inputted it's a, a lot of just me reading in that style, it would do that because there's yeah. different ways of changing tones and stuff. I just threw a bunch of stuff in there and saw what would stick. No, it's good. But yeah, it sounds like you. I think there's ways of tweaking it. And I mean, I just literally copied and pasted. But I, there's other ways of kind of adding some of those things to it. But um, there we go. I just thought. Yeah, because be... it said Kenosha Y instead of <laughs> in Kenosha Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Kenosha Y. But so like as far as that story goes, like I'm one of those people with the pennies. Like mm -hmm. I find them all the freaking time. Yeah. All the time. And like I found one a week or two ago in my kitchen. And it was like, there's no reason there should be a penny right there in the middle of my kitchen floor, but mm -hmm. there's a penny. And I just find it very comforting. And I was like that person. I never had heard of it until somebody told me. And then I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And it still happens all these years later. Yeah. It, 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 it's funny. Because I, I have it sometimes, too, and I never have change. Like, I don't use cash for much. So when I find one, like, around the house, I'm like, where did this come from? Like, yeah. Like, they're not in my pockets. I don't. I, Harper doesn't carry them. But it's, yeah, it's just kind of weird. And cool. Oh, like, very much so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've always, I just find it really comforting that a lot of people are the same as me. <laughs> and 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 then the story about the guy, which I think is kind of interesting mm -hmm. that, you know, like, especially when you're at work, it's like, why is that guy just standing there? Oh, where did he go? Yeah. You know, that's because you're not planning on seeing a ghost at work. You just see a guy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the supervisor, whoever it was, was like, oh, yeah, that. You see, I always planned on seeing a ghost at work, but I never got to. I, well, where we used to work, yeah. Other, and I never saw one there. Other people, other did. people did. Yeah, I was always I would go downstairs because that's where our, our production rooms were, where we make commercials, and I would you know be down there half the day, and it was, that's where people would always talk about seeing people, and I'd go around and I'd turn the lights off, and I it's like something at some point, but nothing, nothing ever. Yeah, I never saw anything. You could feel something there. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not like to go down in the basement with, because it was dark yeah. down there. Yeah. I guess the, so, only, the only thing I ever had was the volume knobs, and we've talked about that, where the volume would just slowly turn, turn up. up. <laughs> like, what the hell? And you go down to production rooms, too, sometimes. Uh, it would happen there too, if, especially if somebody left the monitor onto like the radio stations and you're hearing that through the speakers. I remember several Saturdays I'd get down there and it's like just blaring out of the basement. Like <laughs> something turned him up. Yeah. Very weird. But yeah. And I never could figure. And like, I remember sitting there more than once and <clears> it's, <throat> it's a, and it happened with the different, they even put new board mm -hmm. mixing boards in. Yep. And it still happened. Yeah. And like the last one, it had, it was a, uh, <clears throat> it wasn't like a slider where you pressed it up and brought it down. Mm -hmm. It was a knob. And, and so, but it had a little light next to it. Mm -hmm. So it lit up the louder it got. You yep. could see the little bars. Yep. And I can't tell you how many times my headphones just start going up all, and I'm look, I look down, I'm watching it. Mm -hmm. It's just turning itself up. Yep. It was the weirdest thing. And it did and it. it happened yeah. 20 years. Yeah. I worked there for 20 years and it happened for 20 years. Yeah. I was there 10 and it did it. I, and it, it went from studio. It did it in multiple studios, multiple different boards. Because at first I thought it was just a glitch on the one board. And I'm like, well, let's do something wrong with it. But then it would happen in the other studios. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> I don't, this is a little weird. But. Yeah. And it happened at random times. Like you're in the studio by yourself and yeah. it's happening. Like you're getting ready to talk. So you got your headphones on and then all of a sudden. Ah! Mm -hmm. Or like people would be in the studio and you'd be talking and all of a sudden it would just go up to 11. Yeah. And everybody would be like, God, what are you doing? I yeah. Look at my hands. <laughs> they weren't touching anything. I remember several times I'd be like talking to somebody in the newsroom, which was the next room over. 
And I didn't, I have it cranked at all. You know, I just went to the next room and then all of a sudden you start hearing it blaring and then like next room, but there's nobody in there that's turning it up. You can go yeah. in there and you got to turn it down. It's yeah, that was, that was, uh, yeah. Happen all the time. I always say like, I never had anything happened in that building, but I guess I did. That was something that was, that was weird. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Hey, guys. This is Karina. Um, I've been wanting to call in for a long time. I have plenty of experiences, but I think I'll start with my favorite one. It's really positive. Um, it was it was just really awesome to experience at such a young age. Um, I had an aunt that passed away in the year 2007. I was really close with her. This is my dad's sister. She... Fortunately, passed away in a really tragic motorcycle accident in the mountains of Alaska. Um, she had passed away, and when she had passed away, I was in foster care with my two siblings. We got out shortly after and had went to go stay with my dad. And unfortunately, at the time, my dad was just struggling really bad with addiction and alcoholism. And he was not coping very well with the loss of my aunt. Um, one night, he was very drunk. I mean, really drunk. He was getting sick he was completely incoherent but still conscious and I was about eight years old um taking care of him it was probably three in the morning rubbing his back and from the living room couch where we were while my siblings were sleeping you can look straight down the hallway and you see my aunt's poker run poster uh with her picture on it and my dad he's an artist so he had drawn out the design for the poster um, and I'm sitting there and I just felt so angry that my aunt had left. And out loud, you know, as an eight-year-old girl watching what's going on with my dad, he's struggling with the loss. And I just remember, I kept saying, why, 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 why did you go? Like, look at him. This is because of you. And I, I was young, so I didn't understand. It was my first experience of death with somebody close to me. And I felt more bad for my dad because of what was going on. And I blamed it on her. And... For some reason, I just, I mean, I had chills. I remember having chills, and I thought because it was cold, but it wasn't. It was the middle of summer. And I looked down that hallway from the couch where my dad and I were. I looked down the hallway, and at first I thought maybe, because, you know, we had one of those older lights that are small, and they kind of screw into the wall, not hang from the ceiling or anything like that. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I left that light on, but I had taking a closer look and there was definitely no light and as I looked longer at it I was making out a form but it wasn't like a clear foggy type of form I mean it was a bright form and my aunt she she always had really 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 long blonde hair and that's the first thing I noticed I was like okay I can make that out and it was almost like aura colors um almost like rainbow colors, not as bright and just glowing, but I could make out that it was a person. And she was standing, I still to this day believe it was my aunt. Um, this was only a few weeks after her death. And she was standing by the foot of my bed because I had hung her poster for her poker run service um, right above my bed, the foot of my bed. And she was just standing there what I thought she was looking at the poster. Um, now that I'm older and I kind of relive that memory, I feel like as if she was looking at me. Um, I was there trying to help my dad grieve, um, trying to figure out what was going on. And just, I can't say that I, you know, made eye contact or really even made out a face, but I know it was her form. She was very slender, very tall, and the hair. I will never forget me realizing the moment that I made out that's her hair. Um, I immediately felt calm. I didn't feel any fear. I felt calm. And I almost felt like she wanted to tell me it's okay. You know, that it's, it's okay. She's okay. She passed away peacefully in the hospital after the accident. Um, it was just a hard death for everybody. My family's extremely, extremely religious and I just, I remember, you know, praying at that moment, thinking I was talking to her. And I really feel like that was the one time I was hurt. Um, I'm no longer religious. I don't try and pray or reach out to loved ones in that way. In different ways I do. 
Um, but yeah, that's my story. I try to make it a little bit simple, pretty quick. Um, first experience I ever had. I have lots of experiences. My husband's mother had passed away when he was 16 and I was 14. So I have lots of cool little stories about that and experiences that have happened. Um, I'll definitely be calling back in. Thank you, guys. Thank you for sharing those experiences with us. Thoughts? I couldn't hear everything really well on that call. Mm -hmm. So... So go ahead, because I missed part okay. of it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it, it's one of those things where they, you know, you end up getting those visits when you least expect them from your loved ones. And, uh, you know, it can be very, very real. And it is, you know, I think very, very real. And, you know, it, oftentimes, and I think when people have those experiences, it happens. Uh the most important thing, what I'm trying to say is that it happens and it, it's really between the two people. It's not necessarily something where you need the validation of others to say this happened when you know uh, that you did, in fact, have that experience. And do you think like people like her are I just think that there's some people who their whole life could try to or want to have an experience like mm -hmm. that and they never can. Yeah, I just think that obviously she's got an ability mm -hmm. to connect. It does. And it's kind of a matter of, you know, if you have that ability, then do you want it? <laughs> I know, right? You know, or are you going to accept it? Are you, I mean, sometimes do you have the choice? Do you not have the choice? And I think everybody, you know, there's different opinions on that as well. Let's do one more uh, quick call before we wrap it up for today. Hi, let's hear your ghost story. Um, hi, Tony, Carol, um, and the gang. Um, so this is a story from when I was, I think, 10. I'm 13 now. I might have been nine, actually. But um, I was at a sleepover with my friend Sophie, Allie, and Danica, I believe. And we were watching a scary movie, I think. I don't remember which movie it was. Um, but we were watching. And of course the lights were off to make it all the more scarier. <laughs> um, and I turned around and coming down the stairs, well, we were in the basement. So, and, and coming down the stairs, I saw two shadows of people and I told the others and they looked too, and they were like, what in the world? And we were scared. So we went to go investigate, um, and there was nothing there, obviously, because ghost. Um, and since we were like really young kids and it scared the shit out of us. So we went to go sleep with Sophie's mom and being young kids and she had her, we, we were young and uh, Sophie's mom had her, um, uh, air conditioner thingy on and I saw the red light and I was like is that a demon because like you know the red light you're already scared uh, so uh, <laughs> that's it's a really short story but I I, I don't know uh, tell me what you think and um, yeah I uh, Look forward to having my call on the air if it is on the air. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that uh, that with us. And I think a lot of us have memories of things like that. Um, but no, I mean, I think sometimes, you know, kids are, are targeted too, or they just are able to pick up on some things um, because they're going to be the least likely to be believed. Um, but I mean, that sounds like they had an experience. They saw some shadows where there shouldn't have been shadows. And then they're kind of nervous. And then I get it. You're scared. You see a red light. You think it's you know, demon eyes. But, um, but obviously, you just kind of got rattled by something. No, and I think, like we've talked about that before with um, kids. I think a lot of kids are pretty open to it. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids. And then as you get older and more things occupy your brain and your time and your life and, you know, but I had experiences when I was that age, I was living in a haunted house. Mm -hmm. And so I, yeah, I absolutely think there was something. Yeah. And the thing, I mean, it's interesting too, because it's one thing when you're telling the story of your experience when you're that age living in the haunted house 
and the reactions you get from people because you're a kid versus you telling the exact same story, <laughs> right? Um, you know, 30, 40 years later. Um, and it's like, oh, you're so much more believable now, but <laughs> it's the same story, you know? Yeah. When I was a kid, my mom would be, oh, you kids. Yeah. You kids. And now she's like, well, you know, maybe. That was her coping mechanism. It's like, whatever, you know, or, or she's trying not to scare you or both, you know. <laughs> she, she was too busy in her own crazy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it real. Yeah. No, I, uh, I agree. But thank you for sharing that story and calling in. We do appreciate that. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all of our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, new ones all the time, and it's all commercial free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.